I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I had a I had a good opener for this episode, which is a lie. <laughs> it's a lie I tell myself to make me feel like I've gotten better at podcasting. Yeah. Um, so I've gotten bad at Magic Arena. Have you? I need. I haven't played it in a you week. You have to play. You have to play. You have to one. If you haven't played in a week, you got to earn your pass, dude. I I know. I, I I've fallen behind. I had projects uh, I was working on. I had. Um, Basically, so I could actually have cats in the room with me at the same time. I built, uh, like a, a thing so they can look out the window without. I saw that. <laughs> it's very good. Why? Thank you. Did you? So did you buy like a shelf from Target or something, or did you hand build it? I bought lumber from Lowe's and I built it by hand. Nice. It looks good. What... Yeah. No, it came out well. I like it. It's, uh, and the cats can, they, they like it. They just up there and look out the window. That's why I've got the window closed right now with the blind down. So they're not up there making cat noises in the podcast. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I was actually kind of worried when we first started this, ep- mm-hmm. the last episode. Yeah. Um, because my neighbors have been moving around next door and it's a whole bunch of stuff. Ah, yeah. I don't want neighbors. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I want to live close to stuff. Yeah. But I don't want neighbors to. Oh, no. I'm with you. <laughs> like, it, it's such a uh, it's such a thing that I just, I don't like dealing with people. <laughs> oh, okay. So I thought I was just getting old. Yeah. Um, And that my feet were just like swelling up for no good reason yeah uh because my, my toes have been hurting me yeah lately which is such an old man thing to say um is it gout do you have gout no i just realized what it was because i was thinking about neighbors and then that made me realize that i have a desk sitting in my driveway yeah uh that has free tape to it i think it's not going to get taken because it got water damage oh um, yeah but when I had to go, when I had to leave the house yesterday, mm-hmm. I drug it aside and I bumped my toe. Oh, okay. So I guess that does mean I'm getting old because a injury from yesterday is now manifesting. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of that, I had forgotten that I even was injured. So <laughs> it might be that I'm becoming an old man. And that might have just been more evidence to the fact that I am becoming an old man. <laughs> Yeah, I bumped my toe. That's what happened. <laughs> Mystery solved. Oh, jeez. And it wouldn't have been solved if it weren't for the meddling kids on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there was a real... Uh, never mind. I don't even want to go into it. Oh. <laughs> the... Um... Oh, jeez. So, I watched a movie. Yeah? Which movie? Uh, it was called We Are Still Here. We Are Still Here, okay. I think that's the name of it. Or is it Are We Still Here? We Are Still Here. It's, uh, yep, that's yeah, right. Yeah. It's got a... So, it, it had... Yeah, looking person. Yeah, he's, like, burnt. Um. Yeah. So, it's a haunted house movie, right? Okay. And I thought it looked spookier in the trailer... Like like it, mm-hmm. like the the practical effects on the the ghosts are pretty good. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. First act decent. Second okay. act kind of weak. Third act actual comedy. <laughs> and now I say actual comedy as someone who watches a lot of horror movies, not actual yeah. comedy as in someone who doesn't. But like it reached a point that I thought the house was going to start burping. <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> uh i recommend it highly though yeah because it's so fucking funny 
Although, mm -hmm. if you're from New York, there is one thing I will say. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be set in 1970. Okay. But all the cars have license plates from the two thousand from the, the late 2000s. Oh. <laughs> like the late aughts, early teens. Yeah. Uh, it's a ton of a ton of cars like that because they have the orange and black license plates. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not gonna curious to see on the when they when they shot um whatever the the Ruffalo thing on two oh nine. I actually know for a fact that they don't have the orange license plates. Okay. Actually now that you say that they uh they didn't have license plates. Yeah, I, I know for a fact that they don't because I my job has the parking lot that's housing all those cars. Okay, because they also yeah. had a bunch of them parked down. Like, as soon as you, see, you, you start talking, remind me. So I've got a co-worker who lives down near the cemetery mm -hmm. that's on uh, off Lucas, um, yeah, yeah. if you know Sir Wire uh, I'm talking about. Which and one is that the... It's the one that's not far from the Hurley Mountain Inn, like across the other side of the street near where like the rail trail entrance is. Oh, okay, okay. I think I know. The, what you're they about they were storing a bunch of them over there, just alongside the road. So my coworker went there and just started taking pictures of cars, yeah, and he yeah. showed them to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I think that's the third time that the Hurley Mountain Inn's shown up in our uh, us talking about just things in the area. Yeah, man, this is such a local <laughs> podcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, it's bad. <laughs> Although I have been now that you now that I say local podcast, I have been thinking about like how the fuck we if we ever did a live show of Cryptopedia, how it would happen. There's I don't know. Have you have you put any thought into that? Because like I put a little thought into it. Like it's it's way 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 not a thing that's gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah, but that, it's I don't know because it, it, like, it's like will we it's have to long. do? Will we have to do a? dollop style thing or would we have to do a uh a last podcast thing where they like have a set that they play i don't know i don't, I here's, don't know here's a thing it won't be a thing unless this was like a <laughs> full-time job the uh, <laughs> yeah so the fact the, of the matter is it's probably never gonna happen <laughs> So if you, uh, I was on on uh, still scrolling through the Google images for We Are Still Here, yeah, and uh, I highly recommend it because stuff gets crazy. Which one are you gonna show me? It's uh, <laughs> I think I need to go edit the uh, the fairy episodes copy oh, no, at this don't. point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, man, that movie was so weird because, like, I'm watching it and I love, I love bad horror. Yeah, and bad like, horror is best horror. Like, I love it when things get just totally ridiculous. Have you? So I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but it's an actually good horror movie from like the day. Um, it's called From Dusk Till Dawn. It's got like Cheech and Chong and like what? You know, it, it, but they're not playing Cheech and Chong. They're just like people Are who you like own a bar and there's like vampires but not like twilight vampires like 96. old school six yeah like it's good this it, poster I think it's on netflix brandon yeah brandon this poster this poster is amazing right the the face i don't know who oh tarantino it's a tarantino flick so I think it might be the first movie george clooney was ever in okay yeah because george clooney is the main face it looks like on this yeah this and then i don't know who the guy to the let's see, harvey Keitel is that harvey yeah. Keitel? and they've got a uh, machete is also in it oh uh, i love me some uh oh what's his name machete it's not machete it's you machete. and i both know it's okay yeah <laughs> that was another movie that machete machete kills yeah was danny trejo um mm -hmm. that was uh movie yeah that was a movie that ended three times during its like run <laughs> right like i remember yeah. watching it with you and lissa years ago when it came out yeah and it, it was it was like 
Critics cited the poor overuse of plot points, poorly produced CGI, and out of place science fiction elements. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that sums it up pretty well. That's a pretty good sum up of that movie. Yeah. Man, it tanked. Oh good yeah. Lord. It, it was yeah. it was it took twenty million to to produce. Yeah. And its box office was fifteen million. Oh that's not a huge loss. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Also, it was a. Uh, it features. It does feature an Oscar-nominated actress. Yeah. Yeah. What well, Lady so. Gaga and uh, um, uh, yeah. Junior. Elon Musk starred as his as himself in it. I forgot that was even a <laughs> thing. Oh, I did too. Good lord. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Well. I think 2012 is the uh, so I have a theory, Brandon. Yes. Now I don't know if you you have this 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 notion as well, but mm-hmm. there's a theory that I have that you have a frame of reference year. Okay. Right. So everyone has a year, and it can shift, but everyone has a year that's their frame of reference year. Yeah. Right. So the frame of reference year is the year that you think it currently is. So like if you see something you're like <laughs> oh that's that that just came out, right? Yeah. I think 2012, 2013 in between there, that's my frame of reference here. Okay. Yeah. I no, I that legitimately makes sense. think that because things that came out in those two years, I'm like, yeah. "Oh, that just came out." Oh, and yeah. then I'll look it up and it's like, "Oh no, that was that was uh, you know, 6 years ago that that came out or 7 years ago that that came out." Yeah, because like I think, uh, what was the name of the the Guillermo del Toro movie that came out that year? It the, was the uh, was one with Hellboy? ghosts in it. No, it was the the one with ghosts in it. It was the story. Oh with yeah, it. yeah, no, that's a good uh, movie. I'm Crimson... drawing a blank. That's a real good movie though. It was like Crimson something, Crimson Peak. Yeah, 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 yeah that sounds right. Oh, that was 2015. So even still, my <laughs> yeah. But, like, there's certain movies like that that I think just came out. Yeah. And I think, I think my frame is, like, ballpark 2010 plus or minus a couple years or something like that. Because, mm-hmm. like, the, the we were talking about four, and for me, I'm just like, oh, Fallout 3, that, like, just happened. Yeah. And I, I legitimately, I don't know what causes it to happen, but I think everyone has one. And if you yeah. think about it, you can figure out what yours is, too. Yeah. But... Before we hit 15 minutes again in our opener. Oh, geez. Uh, let's uh, let's get into what this podcast is actually about. Yeah. Um, which, of course, is discussing the works of Robert Rodriguez. Yes. Um, so I thought Spy Kids was his best work, to be fair. Really? Um, it, was, it was interesting that he did a, a, a spinoff of Spy Kids and made Machete. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, anywho. Or maybe it was Sharkboy and Lava Girl. That might have been his best work. Was it? Yeah, he made it. Oh. I, the, uh, I you don't... know, I'm, I'm going to say that Once Upon a Time in Mexico, I think, is his best uh, oh, movie. Oh, so you went you went real with it. Yeah, no, because I, I legit love that movie. That's fair. No. And that's, uh, the, the other cool thing about that movie, I could be incorrect. Um, uh... No, it wasn't once put it was um uh El, Ma- El Mariachi was uh, mm-hmm. another one which is the one that came up before that and El Mariachi was his college um like final Thesis. film. Yeah. So he shot that in college but here's the deal. He shot it on his own. So like he like there were actors and shit but he also had like the he was holding the camera and like the boom mic at the same time and like doing all the stuff. And if you watch El Mariachi with that in mind, you're like, holy shit! Yeah, I, I think I think he's one of those those filmmakers who doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, because like, he's made a lot of kid movies, but just because yeah. you make kid movies doesn't mean you're not a good filmmaker. Oh yeah, no, he's a fantastic filmmaker. El Mariachi yeah. was fantastic. That's why Lost My Shit and Once Upon a Time in Mexico came out because like uh, it was great. When did Once Upon <laughs> Okay, so this was me trying to avoid us hitting 15 minutes for our opener, and we hit it. They had guns inside of their guitars. God damn it, Brandon. 
<laughs> this is Cryptopedia. If you if you don't know what Cryptopedia is about, you might want to go back and listen to at least two weeks ago's episode, because this is a continuation episode, folks. Yeah, and last week's I botched the intro. <laughs> Uh, well, to be fair, I botch the intro every time I give it yeah. to you, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just how it goes. So, yeah, uh, this, I, I'm going to skip doing the guessing game. Okay. I'm I've Brandon. Told you, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm John. <laughs> we did it again. We did it again. We did it. Uh, We're all, so, we record two I'm episodes feeling a, weird today. a week. Yeah, this has been a weird day. Yeah. Listen, I hurt my toe lifting a, uh, a desk, you know, uh, I'm getting old. Yeah, it's it's. I hate it. But someone at work pooped on top of the toilet seat. Continue. Well, now wait a second. I work in now, engineering. Now wait I a second. I don't know why or how that happens. Now wait a second. Now they're all say, adults. When you say on top of the toilet seat, it was like a chicken nugget. Okay, now this is important, Brandon. It's the second time I've witnessed that. It's not the toilet lid, right? No, there is no lid. So these are the toilets where, like, there's no lid. It's just that, like, horseshoe shape thing that goes up okay, and down. Okay, okay. So they left the nugget on top of the horseshoe shape thing. And I don't know how that works. All right. I think the podcast is over. Is that... <laughs> uh, I can't think about anything else now. Yeah. Like, I was about to start talking about this week's episode and uh-huh. what we're talking about. But, you see, here's the thing. This person's an actual monster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're, right. you're not wrong. Like, like an uh, an actual monster. I'm yeah. sorry. I know that, like, I'd be... Oh, my God. I'm, I'm getting, like, literally sick right now <laughs> thinking about this. <laughs> like, it's welling up inside of me. This yeah. person's a monster. And you don't want to know what's worse? It was on the good toilet, because the other one's got the seat <sighs> that's a little bit loose. No, now... No, here's the thing. The one with the seat a little bit loose? That's the good toilet now. <laughs> Now that you have knowledge that someone did this terrible thing, yeah, the loose seated toilet is now the good toilet by <laughs> definition. Yeah, and that's that it all the more sad. Yeah, that's the good toilet now, and you have yeah. to know that. You yeah. have to accept that that's the good toilet. Yeah. Good lord. It is, and it's a shame that it happened too, because the other the other toilets have the toilet paper dispenser that protrudes too far, so you have to lean to the side so it doesn't like. Because it, it hangs over too far. I hate that. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. What, 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 I, Monsters? I put, yeah. Yeah. I, I put it. You can see it. it it's called Bridgewater Triangle Part 2. <laughs> <sighs> we're, we're doing the second part of the Bridgewater Triangle. Woo. If you want to know more about the Bridgewater Triangle. So. Uh-huh. Ah, dead. I, my my day's ruined. You ruined my day. <laughs> I welcome. don't work with you. I don't work with you. I don't <laughs> come anywhere close to where you work. The I can't think of the last time I was even in the town that you work in. I think I was <laughs> climbing a mountain. Honestly, like oh that before. that long ago uh, was that when we were geocaching? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was like literally the last time I've been there. That's literally. been a minute, man. Yeah. So. But my 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 the knowledge that there's a monster doing this in the world makes me unable to sleep at night because here's the thing, they could go to Kingston. I go to Kingston. Oh yeah. I sometimes have to use restrooms in Kingston, and there's somebody <laughs> who is willing to just leave a nugget in their office. Yeah. That's no, where in, they in the, work. In the bathroom, it was not in an office. That would have been worse. But it's in the office. The oh yeah, yeah. Is in it's the an office. office space. Yeah, yeah. You don't do that. If you, you work don't... in a place, you don't. So, I want to person... find who it is and have their security clearance revoked. <laughs> Seriously, they're a monster. They can't be trusted. I don't care. I don't care that this is literally five minutes of us talking about this. <laughs> this really upsets me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's me and, a, and another individual. We're trying to it, we're we're doing some investigation, we're trying to narrow it down. <laughs> Actual monster. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is a continuation episode, as I said before. Episode thirty six was where we did the first one of these. So I'd recommend listening to that first. 
because there's pertinent information that, given the nature of this being continuation, we're not going to include here. Okay. <laughs> or we could include it, and then it's a twice as long episode, and I don't even know why we. Yeah, I think you should one. actually open up the part one uh, copy right, and just let me, just let do me a go... real quick read through on that. Yeah. Uh, um, let's out see, loud. Let's we'll see, we'll just see. power through it. We'll we'll not get it down to maybe like forty five okay. minutes before um, we start this. So this week's episode was suggested by our Hodai patron Connor Hughes. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, traditionally, the Bridgewater Triangle is drawn between three towns of Abington, Raybuff, and Freetown. I, I don't think this joke is going to play, Brandon. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although, to be fair, those were all the things that I was going to say. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, my credulous sources for this week's episode, as with last week's, were the Bridgewater Triangle documentary, Lauren Coleman's Mysterious America, and some excerpts from Curious Creatures of New England. Uh, my more skeptical sources and sources delving deeper into the phenomena will, mm. as always, be included in the show notes. So, an actual review of the Bridgewater Triangle, not me rereading the whole thing and talking about someone who's a monster. Uh-huh. Um, that's going to come up this whole episode, you realize that. Yeah. That's this episode. <laughs> I put a lot of work into some of the jokes in this episode, and yeah. you've ruined them. Oh. <laughs> so... As I said before, jokingly, uh, the Bridgewater Triangle is traditionally drawn between the three towns of Abington, Rehoboth, and Freetown in southeastern Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Uh, for years, the Bridgewater Triangle has been a hotbed of paranormal activity. Stories of ghosts, cryptids, and even the demons abound in this haunted region. Um, last time, we mainly focused on the Hockamock Swamp. The with Hockamock a Swamp? The Hockamock Swamp. Mm-hmm. With a particular <laughs> interest in the history of the region. Uh and Bigfoot. Because we're a Bigfoot podcast. Yeah. And we talk Bigfoot. about Bigfoot. We talk about Big Feet. He's our I silent third feet. host. He's our silent third host. He's looking at me sternly. Bigfoot, were you the monster? I know you're a monster, but that doesn't mean you have to be a monster in the bathroom, too. <laughs> um, I should note last time that I mentioned Giant States and Thunderbird in the region, and I thought I was mm-hmm. going to do them this episode. I looked into them. And that's about all I can tell you. <laughs> so, go, go. Um, this week, <laughs> this week we're going to expand to the larger triangular region. Uh-huh. Uh, and to begin, let's take a look again at the Pukwudgie. Oh, yeah. I like, did you, was this you? Did you do that? Is I that what you have, did? Is I may this have your photoshopped, work? That, that may have been me. I may have photoshopped that. The So you photoshopped the Pukwudgie. Into the Break Into Electric Boogaloo cover mm-hmm. art. Yep. They're back for everyone who believes in the beat. <laughs> that's actually pretty good. That, that's, that's, you, you were successful. <laughs> I put a lot of I, I put a lot of work into that joke. It took about uh, I think 10, 15 minutes or so. Okay, um, that's worth it. It was it I was worth spent. it. I almost did all of their heads with puck wedgie faces, but then I was like, that first one took ten minutes. Yeah, you know, I, I almost didn't notice it because I just because I haven't seen that art in so long. I was, I was like, oh, he made an electric boogaloo joke, and then I went, oh, he put the puck wedgie in there. It was pretty fun. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Uh, if you want to see that, it's in the copy for our what is that? Jackalope and Hodag members. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, so puck wedgies, as we mentioned last time. Uh, are basically Native American leprechauns. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Mischief makers, they're tiny. Yeah, uh, and they're but although they do have varying levels of violence because they'll yeah. they'll range from uh, they'll range from Lucky the the Lucky Charms leprechaun who is trying to get his trying to keep kids away from getting his Lucky Charms, mm-hmm. uh, which is important. Mm-hmm. Sugar's not good for kids. No, or really probably anybody. Not really anybody, yeah. Um, to uh, Warwick Davis's phenomenal role. Was it Warwick Davis? Yeah, it was uh, Warwick yeah. in uh, yeah. The Leprechaun. Yeah, as as The Leprechaun. Yeah. Um, so, possibly it made some appearances in Rock Swamp. It's more common in other areas of the region, from what I've seen. Particularly the uh, Freetown State Forest. Okay. Um, and as I said before, if you haven't listened to episode 36 yet, I super recommend listening to it before listening to the Puck Wedgie section, mm-hmm. uh, because we go into a depth about their lore and stuff about them. Yeah. So, um, 
as an addendum to last week's dive into the Ooh. budgie, uh, the the Bridgewater Triangle also made some claims about dark forces driving the puck wedgie. Yeah. And that they have the ability to generate orbs. Okay, I'm going to assume that that was outside of the traditional puck wedgie. It super was. Okay. Because <laughs> I looked into it, and the only place I saw that being said was by the people in the documentary. Gotcha, yeah. One of those and fantastic, reliable, single-point sources. I do also want to say that they're whiter than white, so... Them pasty. Yeah. Them some pasties up there. You got some Elmers, man. Yeah, yeah. It's some chalky lovers. Yeah. Also, if you don't get that joke, I super recommend watching uh, Squid Billies. <laughs> That's a really funny episode. It's a really funny episode. Doobie Brothers aside. <laughs> See, that's comedy. Making references, yeah. that's comedy right there. Oh, yeah. Comedy we can, uh I'll write that down so we can do a callback later, because I heard mm. callbacks are also part of comedy. They are. They are. Um, making actual jokes, though, not allowed. Yep, no. You can't do it. Uh, we should also steal jokes. Ye- no. No, I'm going to... No. No, I think no. we need to steal some jokes. I think that's important. Right? Okay. I mean, Let's Carlos Mencia got a show. That is true. <laughs> uh, so, the most... most uh, I'm still thinking about that, that monster. Um, the most prolifically reproduced description of a Pukwudgie sighting in the Freetown State Forest is the account of Joan. Just Joan. I couldn't find Joan? a last name. It's okay. Joan. Um, you know you're a redneck if you live in Joan. Booyah! Joke stealing done. That's not really a joke stealing. That's mainly that's making Just a, a bad joke. Bad, yeah. A bad joke about yeah. an archetypical bad joke. Yeah. Because, okay. like, I, I mean, so here's the thing. Jeff Foxworthy has done some... He's, he's made some money. Yeah. He's made some money. That's billing. Well, um, I listen to a lot of blue-collar comedy. Tater books. salad... The listen, there was oh. a time when comedy albums were like a thing. So I had the Dane Cook comedy album. I had the uh, blue collar comedy uh, like live show albums. Um, we listened had... to a lot of the, the Dane Cook comedy album. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Actually. <laughs> his here's his brother stole all of his money. Like Dane millions Cook? of dollars. Yeah, his his brother was his manager and was um, issuing fake money basically to Dane Cook while at the same uh, time taking all of the money from his businesses what? and acting and all that. He took millions of dollars. He took his entire life savings. Like, I get that some people don't like Dane Cook, but that's not fair. There's, well, that even Dane like, Cook's like... he he. So he was on a podcast recently, recently talking about it and he was like, definitely separates himself from like his early comedy versus like his other work that he's done but he is also like invented um so i guess he was always just a cool dude whether or not you like his uh comedy because yeah. he would reply to literally all of his facebook mess uh, sorry his myspace messages oh so really he'd, he'd reply to like thousands of messages like and like he's like have real conversation and he just like call people and be like hey man um, you know, how, like, he'd check up on people, because people would be like, hey, man, your comedy got me through this and that, so he'd just call people and be like, how's everything going? Are you doing Are better? you serious? Yeah. So he was, like, a legit, like, cool dude. And then his wow. brother and his brother's wife were in on it, stole millions of dollars from, like, his entire life savings. That's really bad. And then I guess to his nephew, he, he told him, like, because I forget how old he says nephews right now, but he said he, he talks to him on the phone a lot, and he, he said, like, listen... There's going to be a point in time where you're going to have a specific question you're going to want to ask me. And when that happens, call me and I will, no matter what's happening in my life, I will fly myself. Like, he's gonna, he's like, I'll fly and sit down and just, you know, like sort of, you know, have a real talk moment with him. Really? Yeah. Wow. So he's just, like, super chill. <laughs> so apparently Dane Cook is a great guy. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. There's your there's your Dane Cook minute. <laughs> wow, how yeah. about that? Also, um, unrelated to that, I was looking at his filmography because I was wondering what he was doing lately. Yeah, um, he is in. He's an extra on American Gods. Oh, is he? As uh, Shadow's best friend. 
yeah. Robbie, um, who dies. Spoiler alert. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. I just realized that that's, like, kind of a major spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. I mean, it happens early, but uh, retroactive, I may have just spoiled a big plot point of American Gods if you haven't been watching it or reading it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> Anywho, so Joan had been walking her dog when her dog runs off into the forest. Uh -huh. After the dog finally stops, she finds herself looking at a small two-foot-tall creature with pale gray skin and short legs. Okay. Um, bizarrely, the creature had large lips and a canine-like nose. Wait. Which, yes, you, you pretty much probably are going to ask the question that I asked. Well, no, I'm just picture oh, like a like a, a little person werewolf? Kind of? It's I was thinking like a kobold, to be totally honest. Oh yeah. Like that that's she kind of what I'm kobold. envisioning. Yeah, I'm envisioning yeah. a kobold. Because like it, it's it's although less so depending on the variation of kobold you're talking about, so the five E kobold in the Dungeons and Dragons kobold tend to be draconic in nature, whereas yeah. other kobolds tend to be more dog like in nature. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a mix of the two. Yeah. So, um, also, there's a very good book about a kobold by Aileen Martinez. I recommend yeah. it a lot. It's called Shoot. Too Many Curses. Um, okay. This is a weird podcast. So, after a while... Is it, well, hold up. Hold up. What, what? It's called Too Many Curses? Too Many Curses. Okay. It's I'm pretty good. It. It's good? I, I, I recommend all of Aileen Martinez's books. Um, there's what one genre is she? Well, uh, well, well, if he, it's about a kobold, I, can, I bet I can guess. <laughs> it, it's so Ailey Martinez is a guy, and it's basically he he kind of does like a fantasy style. So, yeah, but it's like a modern fantasy. Typically, there's a few cases where it's not modern. So uh, in that in this particular case, um, too many curses is more fantasy. Uh, a Nameless Witch is fantasy. Dill's All Fright Diner is modern. In mm -hmm. the Company Orders of Ogres is fantasy. Um, most of the rest of them are modern, though. So, okay. Um, but the whole the whole notion of the book is like it's a kobold who's left in a, ha a, a mansion, not a mansion, a castle that still has yeah. too many curses, and she has to like deal with all the curses. Oh damn! Okay. Also, uh, important fact: it's a female lead. Um, and it's a female kobold lead, which is something you don't usually see. Yeah. Because it's like, she's literally a kobold. Okay. So, all the stuff that goes along with being a kobold goes along with her. And, very good character. I forget what the character's <laughs> name was. I, I'm sorry. I like reading a lot, in case people haven't noticed who listen to the podcast. And whenever I find a book I like, I really like to tell people about it. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm I'm getting it on Amazon right now. Um, continue. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, so after a while, the dog pulls away from her and the creature. Um, okay. However, uh, and, and and like basically, the dog pulling away from her triggers her leaving the region, the scene. I I, okay. I don't know the the story. So this is like a secondhand story. Yeah. Um. So I don't like. It's really frustrating because I wanted to find the original source of the story, but, like, the only thing I could find were people recounting the story from, like, retelling the story from a book. So what you're getting is a retelling of a retelling of a retelling problem. Yeah, I got so, you. So, um, but the, the basically what happens is she gets pulled away from the creature by her dog, and then subsequent nights she starts seeing it in her windows and waking her up. It wakes oh, her up. is it just, like, tapping on the window? I, I don't just... think so. It doesn't really say what happens. It just says it wakes her up. Um, it is it making noises? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like, literally, all the, the sources I found didn't yeah. tell me that. So, mm -hmm. presumably, this lasted more than one... Like, it happened more than one time. Yeah. Because it, in the articles that I found, it says that it, the sighting stopped after she moved out of the area. So, I presume that means that multiple instances of this puckwudgy like creature harassing her happened okay right so but who knows um additionally and as i said before this sighting first appeared in a book 
Dark Woods by Christopher Balazano, who I think is currently deceased based on some of the things I read. Okay. Um, it was published in 2007, and actually, uh, from the, the like screenshots I've seen of the book, it looks mm-hmm. like it's pretty decently organized. Like, okay. it says it says how many sightings were recorded of this event, mm-hmm. uh, when the interviews were conducted, all that kind of stuff, which, honestly, uh, in the type of stuff we do, mm-hmm. that's way more rigor to the the interviewing process than i've oh, seen yeah. in literally any of the other sources that i found um so hey christopher balazano posthumous good job <laughs> uh so most of the the reading that i did it looks like most puck wedgie stories are kind of the same like ooh, i saw okay. a thing yeah and that's it um, the, the, there's really only three noteworthy ones that I could find last week's, uh, uh, we want you one Jones okay. and Tom, which once Tommy. again, Tom doesn't have Tom doesn't have a last name. Doesn't have anything. Doesn't have any identifying information. Yada, yada, mm-hmm. yada. Um, in this particular iteration of the story it was, uh, is being retold from something from paranormalpapers.com which was the only story that had this this particular the only source that had this particular story. Okay. So um, take that as you will. Let's go forward. A man named Tom claimed to have seen a Pukwudgie on two separate occasions. The first can best be described as an instance of the will wisp phenomena. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely going to be its own episode. A will wisp, yeah. Yeah, totally we have to do it. one of There's us a has bunch to of do variations as well. Yeah. Like there's ghost there's there's a like the minor lights there's the the, the train conductor lights there's um, yeah there, there's just a bunch of variations it's a very prevalent piece of folklore mm-hmm. um, we definitely had to do a full episode on it though one of us, in international I, right when we were doing the yeah. uh, Aswang the yeah. uh, I think it, it wasn't the Prada it was the Meninigal um, they said traveled with uh, willow wisps. Yeah, it's it's a super duper common phenomena, and it has many different names depending yeah. on where you are. Like, I think in Japan, there's multiple yokai that fit the will-o'-wisp phenomena, and they all mm-hmm. have like different features. And then layer on top of that, uh, Kitsune have Foxfire, which is its own own. Thing. Oh yeah. So it's it's definitely worth its own episode because it's one of those prevalent paranormal piece of pieces of paranormal folklore. Mm-hmm. Um. That I think has a mundane explanation, but it's worth going into. Um, so, uh, in this instance, Tom sees a glow which swells as though it was breathing, and then he turns around, I guess, and he sees a crap a creature that matches Jones' description. Um, after seeing the creature, it runs off and emits an eerie moan as it does so. Oh no! <laughs> he says, "Oh, you got me!" And then it runs off. What? It's skitters. You should you should uh you should click that link. Uh oh yes. Wait, what link? The link the you see how the how the thing is all blue with an underline? The uh oh I was looking in the Skype window. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh no, what's it linked to? Oh god, it's staring at DeVito. Wait a <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. Yeah, I, that's what I was imagining. Uh, I, I was imagining that he realized that one hand was good his way. Oh, uh, yeah. He was proclaiming his sadness. The Pukwudgie, <laughs> I mean. Not uh, not, not Tom. No. <laughs> so, uh, Tom would later see this Pukwudgie in the parking lot of Freetown State Forest as he was enjoying the solitude okay and uh i've got a i got a link in the the copy um which i think is a a good a good representation of his enjoyment of the solitude uh-huh oh, <laughs> oh no it loops why does it loop it loops <laughs> I, I, I think we'll leave that one for a surprise for the Patreon. Yeah, subscribers. that's the patron only one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought so, it was more code for like smoking some of the devil's lettuce, having some of that jazz grass. So, reportedly, 
Tom saw the creature, eyes glowing red, 20 feet away. His car started, and his radio blared. Naturally, Tom sped away. Of course. Yeah. Um, I, I assume that the radio played a song sung by the Pukwudgie, though, so I've included, uh, I've concluded a link to the song in the show. You the, the your list. God damn it. Oh, Troll Toll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in case you haven't guessed, I think that the Pukwudgie is the Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I, I really didn't buy the story. Oh. Yeah, uh, it doesn't mesh with the story of the Pukwudgie. Like mm-hmm. none of its behavior yeah. is anything like the Wampanoag Pukwudgie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I literally only found it on one site. In fact, for that matter, the Pukwudgie from Jones' story doesn't match the behaviors of the Wampanoag uh, Pukwudgie either. Okay. Um, and of course. You know, Tom's a generic name. Yeah. Like the, the the fact of the matter is both the stories, I didn't see any other corroborating evidence. I didn't see yeah. any like clear information regarding them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both hearsay, anecdotal. You know, all the things that we have on this podcast said are red flags about the authenticity of a story. Yeah. All of those things are present in these stories. <laughs> <laughs> now i will say there is one other little little coda to the Pukwudgie because I, I i looked for more interesting stories on the Pukwudgie and there really weren't many uh, i okay. think there's one person talking about like how they hunted Pukwudgie or something like that and it wasn't very interesting because it was like ghost hunting hunting oh i gotcha and you know you it. know what ghost hunting hunting is really like i mean yeah. it's fun to watch but to describe it is so boring no, oh, yeah. right? I can't like, even imagine that. Like, it, the my favorite thing, uh, Ghost Hunters. I loved Ghost Hunters when I was younger. That was like my mm-hmm. favorite show for a while. Um, to the oh, point I that, that I, to the point that I even taps. wanted to, yeah, to the point I even wanted to make my own version of Taps. This is like in yeah. fifth grade, sixth mm-hmm. grade, somewhere in there. So, um, but. Even they realize, oh man, this this shit's just gonna get boring real quick. So they kind of, I, I guarantee that they punched up the drama and punched up the reactions for sure. Oh yeah, so like they hundred percent did that. And if it was actually that interesting, the first quarter or third of each episode wouldn't be them driving to the location and ex- and like setting up gear and, yes. and all that stuff. Like they, if if a significant portion of the episode is just like setting up cameras and lights, then you know. <laughs> I actually remember the moment that Ghost Hunters, the show, become became boring for me. Mm-hmm. Like I remember it explicitly. It was uh, October thirty first, two thousand nine. Okay, that's I, very specific. I remember it specifically because they were doing an all night stream of their ghost hunt of some like asylum or something. Oh yeah, and I, I watched like thirty minutes of it, and I'm like, this is the most boring thing in the world that I've ever yeah. watched. So if you like that, there is a show where a guy just yells at ghosts and tries to make them angry. That's uh, fun uh, oh, to watch. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's uh, and, that's Ghost Lab, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, Rooster Teeth has a parrot, not like a real like ghost hunting show. That's amazing where they do similar yes. things. Haunters, yeah. achievement haunters, achievement haunters, which is fantastic. Yeah. And you know uh, how like. Gold mining was a big TV show thing after Ghosts was a thing. Yeah. There's a there's a show that's just about haunted mines. <laughs> they combined it. It was there's, not good. Uh, so there's a part of me that's sad that the ever the the arms race of uh, of investigative real reality shows is gone because yeah. like it's definitely gone down. There, there's no question, oh, yeah. right? Like. To that, like late to that, late aughts, early teens was mm-hmm. pretty saturated with those types of shows. Right? Oh yeah, like, there was every there was a ton of ice road trucker shows. There was a ton of uh, crab fishing shows. Deadliest catch, man. Yeah, there there was just a ton of shows of that ilk. Yeah, and like there's I miss a part dirty of me. Jobs. I do too. Although what's his name has some 
interesting opinions on certain things. Mike Rowe? Yeah. What? We're not going to get into it because it can get okay. kind of political. Um, but I did. I do miss. I do miss Dirty Jobs because it was a fun yeah. show. Uh, but at the same time, it was like the laziest period of television history. Oh yeah. Well, everything was a derivative of something else at that point. Well, it's still everything still is a derivative of something else. Um, Welcome to humanity. Yeah. Brandon, I came yeah. up with the idea of this show after listening to the fucking Adventure Zone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's because, well, because think about it. The, 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 the trace of this show was literally yeah. Adventure Zone did Monster of the Week. I was like, oh, that sounds like a fun system. Let's do it. In, let's do something in, in Monster of the Week. We played a few sessions. Cryptopedia, the name, was invented during those sessions. Yeah. <laughs> That's and then true. a little while after that, I was like, oh, what if we did a podcast called Cryptopedia? And yeah. then we did it. <laughs> um, but anywho, so we've gone very far off the point I was trying to make. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, we're at 46 minutes and I'm not even a third of the way through this episode. Oh no, John. Oh shoot. <laughs> oh god. All right. So, let's move on. So I'm not going to read all of this because we're only at 46 minutes. You can look it up cuz it's going to be in the show notes on newbedfordguide.com, April Fools 2017. There was an article written about a sign being put up for Puck Wedgie Crossing. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. I'm pretty sure the article itself was the April Fool. I couldn't figure out if the if the police issued this statement or not. But basically, mm. they were putting a Puck Wedgie Crossing sign up uh, for the mating season of the Puck Wedgie. Oh, nice. Although it was an April Fool's Day joke, I'm assuming. Uh, it's pretty funny. I hope that it's real, but it does look an awful lot like a Photoshop. Yeah. Mainly because the the level of the, the image that they posted onto it, mm-hmm. like the image on the sign is way too complicated for a street sign by like law. So. Oh, is it? I think so. I think you have to be like, I think you have to have it be non, like totally visually flat. But yeah. I could be wrong. Um, regardless, all I got on Pukwudgie, if you want to read that article in the show notes, pretty mm-hmm. funny, pretty good bit, and it showed up every, literally every time I searched Pukwudgie. So okay. I had to I had to throw it in because it literally would not yeah. leave my sight. <laughs> Despite my best efforts. Yeah. So, moving on. Um, there are other things in the swamp beside Pukwudgie. Oh, yeah? Or not the swamp, the triangle. Yeah. There are also some alien big cats. Oh, we got another one for the Cheetor counter. We do, we do. Um, so, I also made another Photoshop uh, movie poster for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. yeah, so it's alien big cats to the secret of the ooze. And so literally you... everything is Cheetor's face. Yes, except everything. for the except for uh, the Bebop and Rocksteady in the background. I think I don't know. Might be Bebop Rocksteady. Oh, Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I like it. Yeah, it, 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 it looks like. Did he have a hard time finding the Cheetor faces? Yeah, a little bit. Believe it or not, <laughs> it turns out they're really difficult to get your hands on. <laughs> Some premium Cheetor faces come at a premium. Uh, co- wow. Premiums come at a premium. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> it took a while. So, um, since the Bridgewater Triangle is effectively a grab bag of every type of paranormal activity, of course yeah. there's going to be alien big cats. Mm-hmm. So, um, for a primer on these, please listen to our Out of Order episode 34, Alien Big Cats. Yeah. Uh, episode 34, showing up in the 33 slot. <laughs> Uh, no, actually, it shows up in the 35 slot. Oh, sorry, 35 slot. Oh, wait. Gotcha. Mm, 34. Well, what happened was we... Yeah, it shows up in the 35 slot. Gotcha. Uh, regardless. There was some stuff on that. You can read You can read our threads. 
Yeah. It, it's technical <laughs> difficulties part two. That's yeah. all we'll say. So um, there's particularly one noteworthy alien big cat in the region. Okay. Uh, it's called the Mansfield Mystery Cat. Ooh. Or at least that's what, that's what uh, Lauren Coleman called it. But the articles mm-hmm. I read at the time, uh, they called it Sylvester the Mystery Cat. Okay. As in the Looney Tunes character. Yeah. Um, but basically the oldest report I could find of it mm-hmm. was uh, a March 31st, 1993 UPI article called Experts Say Jungle Cat on the Loose in Eastern Mass. Okay. So in the, ma- the March of 1993, a rash of sightings of a possibly hybrid jungle cat native to northern Africa had occurred. Um, the creature first seen on the 12th, had been sighted in three towns south of Boston with at least two occurring in Mansfield, which is the eponymous town. Um, Yeah. So the creature was said to have attacked ducks, and I want to make a note here, this is literally the first time the autocorrect word would have been correct. (laughs) Yeah. So here's my question now. Um, It says in quotes, a hybrid jungle cat native to northern Africa. Um, yeah. Do they ha- have an, a, a guess on what the actual cat is? Because if, Not... if by saying native to northern Africa, that means you they have to have something specific in mind, or else they couldn't have uh, specified. I think it's just a, a general. I think it's a, well. I think it's a general like jaguar type cat, or well. Okay. I, I honestly didn't do any research into what they thought it was. Okay. Because I think it's. I think the assumption. I'll, I'll get into why. Because we have big a, cats in the U.S. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into why they, they assumed it was something like that. Okay. In a few seconds. Um, so, in addition to attacking ducks, it also attacked chickens, and it weighed somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds. Um, the creature itself was described as having a log body, short legs, and a fluffy tail with rings and a blocky head. <gasps> I know what that is. What is that? From Archer. Oh, yeah. An yeah, ocelot? The ocelot. Yeah. Yeah. So probably that that's I think what they were thinking it was. Um Yeah, probably Dr. Bet. Yeah. It it ran serpentine. That was how they knew. Um that's how it, Serpentine! Serpentine Babu! I've never seen an ocelot! Holy shit! You guys, look at his little spot! Look at his tufted ears! Serpentine Babu! Ah, Jesus he sprayed me! That reached! Did he get away? Yeah! <laughs> He ran up past us. Good. <laughs> uh, Dr. Charles Sedgwick, the director of wildlife at Tufts University in Medford, Massachusetts, posited this theory, um, and he is he, he like the the notion that it was a hybrid cat, uh, yeah. and he hypothesized that it might have been an escape pet, which okay. the lo- owner may not have had a legal license for, explaining why it wasn't reported. Mm-hmm. This is a very. This is my number one theory for probably ninety percent of big alien big cat sightings. Yeah, <laughs> which I think it makes a lot of sense. People do stuff they're not supposed to do all the time, and then they don't tell anyone that they did it. Yeah, like the monster, like the, the nugget monster. monster, the nugget monster from your office. <laughs> <sighs> it's a bad person. A bad person. Worse than the person who let a, I, I assume, an ocelot out. Yeah. Um, also, I'm pretty sure it was a Minecraft ocelot in particular. Mm-hmm. Because oh, it has a blocky it has head. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, if you look at a Minecraft ocelot and read that description, it's literally one for one. Yeah. Um, so, categorically, this cat sighting fits the blueprint of the typical alien big cat sighting. To a T. Um... An abnormal cat is seen in an area. People speculate and gossip. Nothing comes of it. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, despite de- being introduced in the to this ABC in the Bridgewater Triangle documentary, there really wasn't much more to the story. And uh, if you thought that there was going to be more to the story, um, why? This is a compilation <laughs> episode. <laughs> if, it, if there was more to the story, I, I, I probably would have done a whole episode. Because I yeah. like cats. You do um, enjoy cats. I do enjoy cats. A little my, too my... much. Well, now let's not let's not make a, accusations that might be misinterpreted, Brandon. 
you've got the I, I'm pretty sure you've got the cat poo disease. Brandon, Brandon. Yeah. You have toxoplasmosis as well. We know this. Oh yeah. Both of us have toxoplasmosis. Yeah. Everyone everyone I'm close with has toxoplasmosis, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's because we all like give him the belly rubs. A lot of belly rubs. Jiro is such an easy cat to give belly rubs to. Yeah. Oh, I thought he appeared. I, I felt something <laughs> rub against my leg. And I thought he was there. And I was about to give some belly rubs. Uh, so, there was, however, a serval found in the area after the massive sightings. Okay. Um, although, it was claimed not to be the source of the sightings by the police. Okay. In the bridge, which I, once again, saw in the Bridgewater Triangle documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really it. It was a okay. cat. It was a cat that showed up in the area, which, to me, I, I don't know. I like the alien big cat phenomena because I think it's interesting because mm-hmm. I think it, it's kind of – it's interesting to me because alien big cats get it more than any other species, I feel like, because yeah. there's so many species of cat that they can be like, oh, is that a cat that I've never seen in the area type thing? Mm-hmm. Um, and cats do show up in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I also think it's interesting. Oh, jeez, I don't even know where I was going. I, I I find it I find it interesting that this is viewed as paranormal when it's such like oh yeah of all the things I'm talking about on this episode, it's just out of place animal. Yeah, it's yeah. the most mundane thing. Yeah. Um, but there is a code to this story. Okay. In true American fashion, people sold T-shirts commemorating the event, reading "I survived Cougar Country." Oh, good. Yeah. So, such an American thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the only way it could be more American is if the t-shirts are free. Yeah, like, it's so, so you saw The Good Place, right? Yeah. So, it's, I it's love such place. a thing that it's just a joke in TV shows now. Yeah. Like, the, uh, the dress bitch thing. Which one was that? That was in season one, uh, towards the oh, end. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Eleanor's Eleanor's thing. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> um Honestly, uh you have you have my permission to sell t shirts of something dumb I've said or done. Oh yeah. As long as I get a cut. I need a cut. <laughs> you give me that cut, we're fine. Yeah. But you need to give me that cut. This applies to everyone, by the way. If I get a cut I don't care what you do. You just have to give me a cut. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm... make print that onto a uh, speedos and sell them. Fine. You give me a cut. I don't care what you do. Uh, fine. Fine. <laughs> do it. Do it. Give me some money. I want money. <laughs> Literally, that's that's the only reason. I want money. I... <laughs> do you think Transformers buy themselves, Brandon? Oh no, I know they do not. Some of them do. To be fair, some of them do. When I'm yeah. when I'm tired and Big Bad Toy Store is just a thing, I can just click a button. Oh, then they do just start they do just kind of order themselves. It's bad. <laughs> I'd be careful um, getting uh, Transformers shipped uh, when it starts getting hotter out. Nah, it's not they are that big plastic. A deal. It's not that big a deal. I okay. I usually try to. I I I've been doing it for years. Don't worry. About okay. It. Um. So, we still have, like, a third of the episode, and we're at an hour, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think I'm going to make Bridgewater Triangle have a part three. Oh, hell yeah. I'm down for that. I won't <laughs> because... even, I don't even, I don't even scroll, like, forward anymore. Like, because, uh, honestly, this is about, a, this, this, this right here is about half an episode's worth of content because <laughs> there's no pictures for the next two pages yeah so Shoot. i think we're going to do an episode uh three on the bridgewater triangle uh Hell yeah. so thanks again uh connor hughes uh you you've given us a multi a multi multi partner yeah a um, fount of substance a definite bond uh yeah so what was i gonna say um don't be a monster on toilets. Yeah, don't be a toilet monster. This episode's going to be called Toilet Monster. You know that, yeah. right? Like, I'm oh, calling yeah. this... This is Toilet Monster. Oh, yeah. You've... 
We probably would have. It's in the spreadsheet now. Yeah. Toilet so, monster. Brandon, we probably would have finished this if you didn't tell me about that po toilet monster. Uh, yeah, about the toilet monster if we didn't talk about, like, ghost shows. It, oh, Dane Cook. If no. it was Poop and Dane Cook. No, if no. It wasn't toilet, for those, we would have had them. It's 100% toilet monster, Brandon. 100%. <laughs> If it weren't for Toilet Monster, this episode would have been... Bridgewater Triangle would have been two episodes. Now it's three. <laughs> because of Toilet Monster. Yeah. That, 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 we'll just call it Toilet Monster. It's Toilet it's Monster. It's a wrap. This is a Toilet Monster <laughs> episode. Yeah. Um, so let me pull up the thing that has all the actual show notes on it. Because uh, <laughs> I never reproduce them. Brandon always reproduces them. Brandon's good about yeah. that. Me? <laughs> I don't do it. Because I am the epitome of lazy so uh <laughs> um as always if you want to find out more about cryptopedia cast we do have a mm -hmm. website cryptopediacast.com for instagram and twitter we're at cryptopedia cast and our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com um we have a patreon the patreon has subscribers those subscribers get access to things the things they get access to are described in the different sections. At the $1 tier, you just get a thank you. That's about it. $2 yeah. tier, you start to get uh, all these lovely, lovely show notes and uh, episode copies that have all these Photoshop things that John did this week. And yes, I refer to myself <laughs> in the third person because I'm losing my sanity. Uh, <laughs> for Jackalopes, you get access to audio content. We should have released the second of the SCP episodes, which I still have yep. to edit at the time of recording. Um, and you get mentioned on the show periodically. We mentioned them last week. So if you want to know who's our Jackalope supporters, listen to that yeah. because I don't feel like saying names. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> Unless you want to say the names. You can say the names. I think I said yeah. the names last time. So if you want to say it, you can say it. Oh, of the patrons? Yeah. So yeah. we've got... Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it, man. We've got the uh, Jackalopes... Clay Sinclair and uh, Marty Martin of Parton. Marty Von Party. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, uh, we have a Facebook. We have I hope it's Facebook. legal. It better be legal. If it's not, you got to switch it now. Yeah, it's it, it, that has to be your legal name now. Yeah. It's a law. That's how it oh, works. that actually reminds me of another SNL skit. Yeah. Uh, which might have been talked about on last episode, but who knows? Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a there was an SNL skit about a a fire that happened at a name change office. Hey, wait, what? Like, like it was an SNL skit and yeah. a, like a catastrophe oh. happened at the name yeah. change office. What and happened? Like it was, I don't remember what happened, oh. but it was like a bunch of, it was a bunch of like bad names that people had yeah. because they were there to change their name from the terrible name. Oh, I got you. <laughs> uh, and like one of them was like a 14 year old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who had changed his name to like a joke name like uh like uh like oh uh like seymour butts yeah like seymour yeah. butts or hugh anus hugh anus hugh anus hugh anus yeah yeah um regardless the... <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me i've had more time off this week than i've ever had and yeah i'm just like losing touch with reality I think that's what happens when I don't work. <laughs> I start to lose my edge and I just become mm -hmm. like insane. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a thing. But anywho, uh, if you, we, we post stuff to a Facebook group, uh, mainly just keeping people abreast of things. Um, yep. Additionally, if you want to post weird stuff there, you're more than welcome. We also have a discord, which I still think I need to figure out how to like make that available. Cause like, it's got I like a weird. You can't say like Discord slash yeah. like capital C three lowercase four. Like it's it's yeah. I, yeah. I I also don't want to make it like super publicly available because I want to weed out bots and all that yeah. stuff. So I'll, I'll we'll come up with something in the intervening weeks to figure out how to do that. Um, yeah. it's mainly just a discussion forum more than yep. anything else. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, which I guess you like me talking about poop monsters. Yes. Which now I have to find a poop monster. That's got to be a thing. Right. There's got to be a poop monster. I mean, it's in Conker's Bad Birthday. That means it's real. Uh, yeah. So if you enjoy the podcast, rate, review, subscribe, uh, 
comments are always appreciated. I think sometimes algorithms get all funky, and mm-hmm. sometimes you do need to have comments, sometimes you don't. Because I, I, what I think happens is somebody is given the keys to the algorithm, and they're like, I yeah. think this is the better way to do it. Or, no, I think I, this is the better way to do it. And they change it periodically, or they have an AI that tells them that this is the better way. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, just rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, mm-hmm. If you have any monster requests or stories, let us know. Um, one of these days, I do want to do a listener episode, but we just don't have the content for a listener episode today. Yeah. Um, but anywho. Mm-hmm. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, Instagram is at mu2057. Twitter, JF Dunham. Website, John Dunham Games. And email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And as always, our art is done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird as I hunt down this mystery pooper. I, I don't think you understand how much that affected me. There's you shook. I'm that person's a monster. Yeah, they've They're done Pete Offender. They are, and uh, it doesn't affect me in any way <laughs> personally. Uh huh. But the knowledge that that kind of human being exists in this world, right, is just willing to do that. Too much to handle. It's too much to handle. It broke yeah. me. It broke this episode. <laughs> I hope they're happy. Oh, I'm sure they're laughing in hell somewhere. If only. <laughs> Although I just realized, I realize now that I just basically advocated murdering someone, so maybe not. Yeah, don't don't murder bad. <laughs> don't 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 murder people. Yeah. Don't don't hurt people. In I'm a general. pacif. I'm a pacifist. So yeah. let, let's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, God. All right.